What's up, everybody? Welcome to Nibscast episode 65. I'm one of your hosts, Aaron Lambing, joined as always by Nikki13. Hello. Matt Slade's here. I'm here. And Josh Hancock once again. Hi. All right, a little bit of housekeeping before we jump right into the podcast this week. Um, I've dropped the ball on the podcast for the last couple months. We got back, we recorded two episodes in a row, 63 and 64. And then my USB ports on my computer fried out, or at least so I thought. I don't know exactly what happened. Either way, it ended up getting fixed, but that took a lot longer than I thought. And because I never got around to uploading those to the Google Drive, things just took a while. Sorry about that. Uh, we're hopefully back on track here. Um, next week, PSVR comes out. I'm very excited about that. Um, I'll be having some coverage of that. I'll do some Let's Plays. I'm hoping to do our first unboxing. Um, we'll have to see on how good my little webcam does for how I can set that up for good shots. And then finally, Extra Life is coming up. Mm-hmm. That will be November 5th, the day of play. We'll be starting at 12 a.m. Central Time at good old Matt's house. Yep, um, Matt's house. So, 24-hour stream there. If you donate, you can pick a game. I've already got a $100 donation from Heath and Wanda. Thank you very much. Thank you. And then we will be live streaming a Nibs cast at 6 p.m. during that day. Okay. So, right. um, we'll have more information soon, but that's basically the gist of it. Play some games, have good times, raise some money for a good cause. How have you guys been doing this week? Good. I'm pretty good. Not good. Working. <laughs> Just got a job at Ebates. Cool. So she starts on the 17th there. Very nice, very nice. You got a job now, too? Yep. Yep. Congratulations. And then we're just the grumpy old men who are broken down and beaten. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do news. Sony, as always, uh, since the last time we've had a show, the PlayStation 4 Pro was announced. This was previously the PlayStation 4K or 4.5, however you wanted to look at it. The system will launch on November 10th for $399. US dollars. The system will support upscaled 4K HDR and has a boosted CPU clock rate, a terabyte hard drive, and more than double the GPU power of the existing PS4. This is not a generational leap, instead a half-step design for the hardest of hardcore. The normal PS4, which is now the PS4 Slim model that was also announced at the time, that's already out, will not lose out on anything. All games must run on that base unit. Sony mentioned trying to, basically their whole reason behind this is trying to keep some of the People who jump from console to PC gaming mid-generation to keep up on graphics. Um, okay, I feel like I feel like the people who care about graphics are already just on PC. Yeah, yeah. It might just yeah. be me. Especially, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, yeah, yeah, that's a good statement. Um, there are a list of games on Sony's website that has games that will receive 4K patches and games that are going to be coming out. The most noticeable. Notable of those are the Spider-Man and Horizon Zero Dawn games. Mm. That um, Spider-Man hasn't been dated, but Horizon's early next year. Um, interestingly enough, though, most of these games are from Sony themselves, which makes a lot of people believe maybe there was developer pushback. Because, like, why spend the time to make the pretty version of the game when it still has to run on the base unit? Well, yeah, most most developers aren't going to want to go sink a whole ton of money into a game that everybody already bought anyway, which they'll have to release as free DLC. They're not, they're not going to want to do it. Exactly. Yeah. And it's also important to note that while developers could develop games that do this, the system itself does not necessarily support native 4K. It is upscaled. Uh, which is something so. Phil Spencer has come out and said. He's like, when the Xbox... Scorpio drops. That will be native 4K. Um, now, I also read a story that said, like, it won't play... I'm getting there. What? The, the Blu-rays? Yeah. Okay. Uh, while the device itself will receive a new Netflix app and support 4K streaming, the disk drive itself will not support 4K. So that's what you, you're yeah. looking for? Yeah. Um, something the Xbox One Slim does. That has a 4K Blu-ray player in it. Now the Netflix thing, you got to pay for the 11.99 subscription to get the 4K access anyway. But that's a different story. But I mean, I guess if you're into 4K, like you'll want to do it anyway, and then hit your data cap in about four movies. <laughs> well, I've been using it for 
three months now, and I'm still only hit like 750. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. And then uh, the, probably the most, like, another thing, like, a lot of people are questioning. Whoa. Goodbye, Mike. A lot of people are questioning <laughs> um, what who this is for. And, and the real head scratcher came when Sony announced that all existing PS4s have already received an update that allows them to take advantage of HDR. Yeah. So it's like, okay, so like unless you have a 4K TV, you don't really want this. But then it's only upscaled 4K. Yeah. So it's not that great anyway. So you may as well just either build a PC or wait for the Xbox Scorpio. <laughs> Yeah. and like what's weird is about their like why wouldn't you put the 4k blu-ray drive in there because that's just dumb yeah this is oh, yeah. like this is a real head scratch this is like a well, when, ps3 era sony move as opposed to the ps4 era where they've when, really been yeah hitting home runs when uh 3d blu-ray came out the ps3 couldn't play it but then they just released an update like six months later to allow it to do it but i guess with the discs being different can't do it anyway well, and it's just the conference itself too was really bad. I watched it, and like they find they showed off Mass Effect Andromeda gameplay for the first time, just people walking around, and it made that look boring. It was like, well, I mean, oh it my was god. just people walking around, like, but still, it was like, around. oh my god, Mass Effect. Oh god, <laughs> even that couldn't save it. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll see how, what happens with that coming November tenth. PS Plus games for October 2016, already available, but in case you're interested, the Resident Evil HD re-remaster will be coming to PS4. Or Do you want them PS4? to just push the push the screen boundaries out of the GameCube version? <laughs> now you don't have to pay 20 bucks for it. <laughs> Platinum Games Transformers Devastation is available. Uh, that got okay reviews. I was be interested. Uh, Transformers Devastation. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I heard about that. Uh, Mad Riders, a four-wheeling racing game, and From Dust, one of the god games, comes to the PS3. And Code Realized Guardian Rebirth, a visual novel set in a steampunk version of Victoria-era London, and Actual Sunlight, a game about living with depression, come to the Vita. Hmm. Why did they take naming schemes from Square Enix for that? I have no idea. Especially... You can do better than that. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really <laughs> weird. I was like... Are we sure about this one? But, I mean, apparently a lot of people enjoy their visual novels these days, so... I don't care that it's a visual novel. You can do better <laughs> in naming schemes. Let's not stoop to Square Enix level for anything, ever. Yeah. Finally... Least current. Yeah. Finally with Sony, Bethesda has announced that mods will be coming to Skyrim and Fallout fall, fall 4 on PS4 after all. News comes this week after, since our last show, Bethesda said that Mods would not be coming to Sony's platform and called the developer out in a letter to their fans saying, this is all Sony's fault. Like, we have this ready to go. They're not letting us do it. So the catch, and seemingly what was holding up the whole thing, is you are not allowed to use external assets and instead must use in-game ones. Mods will come first to Skyrim and later to Fallout 4. The company has also used this time to announce that the Skyrim remaster will run at native 4K on the PS4 Pro, and Fallout 4 will receive some enhanced lighting and graphical features on the new platform. See, and I really don't want to sound like that guy, but again, why, why the fuck play Fallout for the mods on a console? Yeah. For approved mods. Yeah. Apparently they're the most popular approved. on Xbox One. Well, approved <laughs> that can't use out ex external assets. But besides that, just the fact that, like... And, like, you can't use a script extender either, so... Yeah. You're, super limited on what mods you can use and i know yeah. a bunch of the pc modders when their mods were being stolen they would write script extender into their mod even though it didn't need it to say fuck you you console people for stealing my mod yeah yep. all right well we'll move on to microsoft xbox one games for gold 2016 october mega baseball basically bobblehead baseball game and the escapist uh a prison escape game yeah, do you play this one, or do you play the build, build the prison? Prison right? architect. I've played okay. list. That's the build one. Is that any good? Yeah, it's pretty good. All right. I know the second one's coming out soon, so that's probably why they're doing this. Um, Microsoft does their split thing, so if you need to check, like one's available the first half of the month, one's available oh, the second yeah. half of the month. And then MX versus ATV Reflex, a racing game where 
MX bikes and ATVs race each other. And oh, I am alive, a post-apocalyptic survival game come to the Xbox 360. As always, all Xbox 360 games that are on the Games for Gold work on the Xbox One backwards compatibility. Oh, no, I'm thinking of Lone Survivor. I have not played I Am Alive. Lone Survivor is really good, though. Xbox head Phil Spencer has talked about Scorpio's pricing. Speaking in an interview with NZ Gamer, Phil Spencer said, quote, Microsoft designed the Xbox One S and the Scorpio in parallel and thought about the price performance of what we wanted to hit with the Scorpio relative to what we were going to be able to do with the S. As such, Microsoft aims to offer the customer a good price continuum so people wouldn't look at these two things as disconnected because of a price delta. End quote. He goes on to say, quote, The Scorpio feels like a premium product, a premium console. However, he goes on to say, people shouldn't be worried about the things that this thing is going to be priced like nothing they've ever seen before. We didn't design it that way, end quote. Basically what I'm reading here is they're not going to, like, they're not going to 599 U.S. dollars you and tell you to get a second job like Sony did during the PS3 era. I didn't necessarily not... see that in what he said. I just saw that, hey, we're not going to, we're not going to say both of these things are vastly different things, but they're both really expensive. Like, True. I just have a hard time feeling, even though that this is supposedly way more powerful, and even after the PS4 Pro event, Phil Spencer was like, yeah, we're pretty confident we're going to have the strongest console next year when the Scorpio launches. But, like, God, like unless, like, they really are pushing this as, like, this is the Xbox 2, I just feel like it can't be more than the PS4 Pro. Because even if it is more powerful, the general consumer is going to be like, but I'm happy with this, and it's cheaper still. <laughs> Yeah, but I feel like the general consumer would just be happy with the Slims. True. Yeah. And the Xbox One Slim is doing really well for them. They've been the top-selling console for at least two months in a row. I'm not sure if October MTVs are out quite yet. but Well, well I said it was a couple be, months but... ago, but... That, that, to me, just says... You know, it was the first one out the gate of the Slims. And, like, anybody who was looking to get a PS4 or an Xbox One, and hasn't already, they're probably, if they, if they want a good console, they probably are going to wait for the 4Ks. And the fact that the Xbox One Slim was the first one out the gate really just means that, like, why don't we just wait for the PS4 Slim if we want it, or we can just pick up this Xbox Slim now. I, it's really the only contender at this moment. Right. So that's, I mean, yeah, it's the, it's the best-selling console, but it's also the only one that's really being sold. So, uh, I lost my line here. Okay, there we go. Um, he goes on. Uh, so talking shortly about whether or not the box would have a 4K Blu-ray drive, he said, in paraphrasing, "There's a better chance it will than not." So they haven't committed to one in it yet, but considering the Xbox One Slim does, it would be kind of weird right. to see that removed. Right. Especially now, like, with Sony not doing it on their premium box, like, mm. they could really stick it to them there. Yeah, I feel like that'd be the only reason they throw one into the new one. Just like, well, they didn't do it. We should. Why not? Yeah. Um, on Nintendo, they have an investor meeting coming up later this month. People are hoping for... Um, some NX news, finally. <laughs> and the Wii U got a game release. Holy crap. Mario's <laughs> out. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. So let's go around the industry. I only have one big story here. Uh, Overwatch seems set to receive a Halloween event, if a leak is to be believed, and a ton of new content in the near future. According to a leak on the Xbox store, players can look forward to a Halloween event called Halloween Terror. It will probably start soon and run through November 1st. The event, if the leak is to be believed, would include over 100 skins, sprays, highlight intros, victory poses, player icons, voice lines, and credits in a new Halloween loot box. So, so <laughs> six skins and a bunch of other shit nobody wants. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. And you probably won't be able to buy them. Oh, no, and guess what? To... It's okay. We'll bring this event back next year and add more things, still not solving the problem with you not getting what you want. Right. Yes. So that one skin, you will get every other one five yeah. times, especially the one you don't want. You can get another Lucio skin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or better, a Symmetra. Actually, I kind of wanted a few of the Symmetra things and never got any of them. 
Well, maybe you'll feel differently after they change it. That's fair. It also appears that Blizzard is hard at work on at least two new characters and six new maps. Jeff Kaplan teased by saying, quote, The team is actively working on more new heroes, and one of them is very far along. The whole company is testing it internally, and we believe this hero will see the soon will see the light of day sooner rather than later, end quote. I yep. would hope so, as much as they've been uh, teasing Sombra. The they better be close to Dodd. That would be the second one they released. <laughs> Yo. They, they didn't even tease the character they released. They were like, yep, here, here's a new character. See, I just kind of assumed that these were excluding Sombra. Eh. I, I feel like she's probably already done. Yeah. It's like, I would be like the So it'll be, it'll be the one that they release after the second one that they're still doing developmental testing on. Yeah, she'll be like the last one they release, and they just don't give any hints <laughs> to any new characters. Just one day log and she's there. Yeah. Oh. Alrighty. Never actually any official patch notes, just... Yeah. The other new character seems to still be in the prototype stages and using placeholder models, according to Kaplan. So just playing around with some game. Um, As far as the maps go, Kaplan said, quote, we are working on a couple different types of maps, end quote. Two of the maps, one far along and the other in prototype phase, will be in the existing game types, while the other four stages in prototype could be something new entirely. Kaplan did go on to say, however, quote, I don't think all of them will become actual maps that we will end up launching. So, it's kind of neat to see them playing around with new game types. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, just make everything payload. <laughs> That's all I need in life. I like the rainy. Yeah. Extract the hostage. That's what I like some, I like some control point. Yeah, they really don't have, like, a... Like, a... Like, it'd be kind of neat if they had, like, a control point where there's, like, three of them, and that's how you gain points is by holding yeah. them, and you just go through. So, TF2 style control right. point. Right. Yeah. So Something just to, like, because I know they don't want, like, just a deathmatch, but something just to promote, like, a, more of just, like, a shooter feel. Right. Like, Especially know. since it does feel so differently, it would be nice to, like, scratch that itch a little bit. Yeah. Capture the flag would be kind of neat. Uh, I I don't like how in a lot of games these days, and I appreciate Halo for this. Like a lot of games, I just like want to redefine capture the flag. I'm like, no, just set one flag on yeah. one side, one flag on the other, and let me run it back and forth. I also like neutral flag. Neutral flag's good. Too. Um, yeah. I was just about to reference when we were talking about it on Timeline Fox, and then I realized, oh wait, no one's heard that because it disappeared. So. Because we're talking about different game types. Oh, yeah. There was that whole section about different possible game types they could do. So that's... That's gone. Yeah. No. Oh. I'm curious to see what they're going to do with Symmetra, though. Because, like, that's supposed to be coming up by the end of the year, they're hoping. Yeah. Some of the changes for that. Sounds right. So I'm curious, especially since they specifically said we don't want her to be another healer. Yeah. You know, support can be other than healing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, that will be interesting to... Have they, I, I really haven't been following the news for Overwatch lately. Like, have they said what they want to do with her, or just that they don't like where she's at? Um, they've basically said that they don't like where she's at. Um, they haven't specified exactly what they change, but they feel like it's going to be more than, like, number, just changing numbers and things. Like, they might actually change some movesets, but they really have not specified in any way how. Uh, just that they're doing a lot of internal testing, and they have a few ideas. Okay. So, But I think last time I heard, looked, they were thinking maybe November for rollout, if in an optimistic view, it could that be later. That sounds familiar. I forget where it was, but... Yeah. At the rate people are leaving Blizzard, it will never happen. Yeah. <laughs> Math wrap up. So I got an email um, from 2K about um, evolving stage two now. Evolve stage two, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to catch you up. <laughs> <laughs> They're having a Halloween event called Sheer Horror. It looks like um, for the four weeks of October, something new is implemented every week. So this, oh, yeah. so this week, um, there's a new hunter called Battle Cabot, and uh, he's the ultimate support option. With comes to precision and utility with a semi-auto railgun and a team-wide cloaking dust. That's cool. We should start playing that again. And then, um... I like that the, it's a dust. 
Yeah. Not a field. No. Like dust. dust. And like the three other things are um, locked right now, so I can only guess like the third option is like a looks like a dome, so I don't know. It might be doing something with the orbital dome that you pop down. Dome 2.0. I'm assuming you're probably going to get a new map and a new monster at some point. It adds lightning to the dome, so there's a 0.001% chance that the monster will be struck by lightning every time you capture it in the dome. So from the, like it. From the 7th to the... Thunderdome. Yeah. <laughs> and, and from the 7th to the 10th, you can get times 4 uh, money in-game right now. Oh, hell yeah. And then this weekend was also the Oculus Connect conference, where they showed off their their controllers called Oculus Touch. That'll have buttons and thumbsticks, but also they detect radial movement and stuff. Guess what? If you want everything, you're paying as much as a Vive costs. And they cost two hundred dollars. <laughs> so, according to, and then um, as spotted by EN Gadget reporter Nick Summers. Um, if you pre-order them, they're ten dollars cheaper, but there are also a fifty-dollar deposit is required. And when you buy the touch and the headset, it's seven hundred and thirty-eight ninety-nine okay, so pounds. They, do, they try to cut you some. Where slack. HTC Vive is seven fifty-nine plus, the, including the controllers. See, my thought is, who gives a shit about Oculus? That's my opinion. With our DRM marketplace. However, a lot of people, and maybe you're going to touch on this, and I'm sorry if you didn't, I was reading this week, that Oculus has found a way to lower the system requirements. So basically now you would only need a computer that costs $500 to make. They found some like voodoo magic where they can like trick your brain into seeing 45 frames a second as 90. That seems like it's going to give my ass a headache. That seems like they're just interlacing. It it's is. a step backward. <laughs> <laughs> and interlacing frames usually don't look the hottest. No, they don't. Like original, no. original U.S. frame rate twenty nine nine seven. It was actually it was actually just under fifteen, because it was interlaced. <laughs> Glorious. So Bioshock Collection update are live on Steam right now. There, not much happened. Um, yeah, it's been kind of quiet the last couple weeks because we're finally getting into, like, holiday release. Someone traveled like, between planets using a jetpack in No Man's Sky? Nice. Um, there's a demo coming out for Pokemon week after next. If you finish the demo, when you get the actual game, you get a special colored Greninja that's not the normal shiny. Um, what else? FNAF 5 came out last night. Mafia 3 is locked at 30 frames a second on PC, but they're going to unlock it with a post-game patch. Good. Because that's stupid. Why have game developers not figured out that locking your frame rate is a bad idea? Especially and, if it's and computer temporary game. at best. Yeah, like... If you're releasing the game on PC, just give up already. Just... just Build the game the way it was supposed to be. Is that all you got? Um, Washington State Gambling Commission has sent cease and desist orders to 40 separate websites that are doing the uh, CSGO skin gambling shit because it's technically a violation of state up, gambling guys? laws. What's up, guys? I'm on this, wait, this awesome new website. Never heard of it before. It's called CSGOGambling.com. You should go there and spend a whole bunch of money. I've never heard of it before. I'm not one of the owners. Don't don't think I'm one of the owners. They uh, they sent Wait a uh, minute. <laughs> they sent Valve a letter um, stating that they need to halt um, trading through the Steam API of these skins that are won on these gambling sites because it's technically against state gambling laws. Valve really needs to start, like, taking more ownership on what gets on there <laughs> and what they allow people to do with their shit. Yeah. Um, this is a free weekend for Sniper Elite 3. I've been playing it. It's fun. 
All right. Yeah, well, let's, let's transition there to what you've been playing. So, um, the first game came out way back on PS2, and then th the second game didn't come out until, like, 360 era. And now they're coming out of the fourth game, so the third game is now discounted at 80% off. Up along with the How close is season the pass. Game? Um, I think a couple months maybe. You can pre-order it on Steam right now, so. Because I always get worried, like, I get, like, super into wanting to play, like, older games that I haven't played. Like, especially if there's a new game about to come out. But then, like, you start play playing those older games, and you can, like, burn yourself out on the game type. Yeah. And then just get thrown right into the new one. It's like, like, if yeah. you want to get into Sniper Elite, forget about the first game and just start with the second one. Yeah. Because the first, the second one is totally different from the first game. Because they added, like, X-Ray Shot, where when you shoot someone and the bullet knows it's going to hit a vital area, it'll, like, the camera will follow the bullet and watch the bullet, like, explode their heart or some shit. Yes. Or, like, explode their lung or their nut. But like, that's one of those things where, like, I'd also say, like, if the second one's that much better, just play the first one because you'd never want to go back if you played the second that's one that's true first. the first one's hard because like wind they they took away wind in the second third ones and they just have distance so you gotta like jack up your scope or whatever why did they take away wind no oh, because in the in the second and third one you're in such they're big maps but like when you're engaging people you're close in or, like, the first mm -hmm. game, like, you'll snipe people from, like, all the way across the map, and it'll be, like, 1,700 meters. Because mm -hmm. there's, like, videos on YouTube where, like, Sniper Elite, like, expert difficulty or whatever, and the wind is blowing, like, 10 miles an hour one way, mm -hmm. and they're all the way across the map, so they're, like, shooting here, and you just watch the bullet, like, go in and headshot the person somehow. Impossible. It's just math. It's simple geometry. Do Thank they you, snipe yeah. by, like... Thank you. Can they become god snipers by just sticking their... Like, the enemy snipers just <laughs> stick their sniper rifle out from cover and god snipe? No. Okay. <laughs> but, uh... But, yeah, I've been playing... It's free weekend, so I've been trying to just burn through the, the third game. Because I was like, I don't really care about getting everything. I just want to play all the missions or whatever. Right. And so far, so good. I'm stuck at this one part, because... Every time... I'm doing stuff, somebody sees me, and then, like, everyone's like, oh, there's a sniper, let's kill him. Like you do. Like you do. Cause yeah, I mean, it's, it's real life. I, I understand where they're coming from. So what I do in Overwatch. Sniper! But it sucks because, like, this mission is in, like, noon daytime in the desert. So there's, like, no cover besides these buildings. As opposed to noon night. As opposed <laughs> As opposed to like, noon somewhere. The, the previous mission, it was it was dark, so like you could sneak around so much easier. But overall, it's a good game. I haven't been playing Shogun too, going against Tom Cruise. Nice, nice. I, I backed the Shogun at this time instead of the Imperial Emperor, and we're totally rolling them. As we, opposed to the Republican Emperor. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> we have, like, <laughs> We have basically all of Japan going for the Shogunate, where, like, the Imperials just are in, like, one little corner, so I put, like, my, my general with, like, a bunch of troops on a boat, and I'm, like, going through the sea down to, like, one of their provinces and just to take it over. Because I technically have to get 14 provinces owned by myself to win, but everybody that surrounds my province is my ally. I don't want to break alliances, because that's me such a good guy <laughs> because i'm amazed <laughs> because if i did my luck is everyone else would turn against me and all five of my allies would invade me see there's now it comes out i know you you'd attack them at first so i could technically switch alliances to the, to the emperor and like destroy all my allies and retake japan but that'd be way too hard just move all your people in close to their general and then switch yeah. They'll never see it coming. Oh, hello, General. <laughs> no, it? I'm just yeah. a friend. Don't have to worry about me. Oh, goodness, it's the last time... For the Empire! Since the last time we've been together, uh, played a little bit more WoW Legion. I haven't played in a couple weeks. Um, 
Destiny came out. So that kind of ground my WoW point into a halt for now. Um, so I've been playing a lot of Destiny, the Rise of Iron expansion. You beat the raid? We have not beat the raid yet. We're on the last boss. We made it. The first, we've, we've raided twice. The first raid night, we made it to the last boss, and that took us so long that we just called it. We got a couple people who, they've raided with us before, but they've never, like, raided during new stuff with us. And so, then, so, so, and a lot of people don't realize that, like, every boss fight, so the white, the white level, kind of like item levels in WoW, the white level requirements go up by 10, starting at 360, every boss. So by the time you're on the last boss, like, we have people and, like, we had a guy who was, like, 350, and he's all like, why can't I do anything? And it's like, well, I mean, you got to grind a little bit more, because that, that's how it works. You can't, like, if you're 10, if you're more than 10 below, like, anything in between 10 points, you'll do less damage, and then when you're at 10, you just do no damage. So... Obviously, it, he hasn't played MMOs before. What? Grind all the things. And that's where we... The last fight is designed that you will probably be lower than it. So that's the problem we're having with that one. The second time, the second night we oh, made it back to him and we actually started trying him. The training but what we were having fight. problems with was because it's designed to be lower and then we still had a couple people who were even lower than that. We, our damage was just, like, we couldn't beat the enrage timer. And right. there's a certain point where you have to, after every, after, like, each individual phase, there's a phase where you have to jump on something to not get killed by something else. Mm -hmm. And there's only four of those. So basically you have f five DPS phases, and if he's not dead, you die. So we, we 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 never made it that far because we were dying to other things too. Right. But again, it, with, your gear, you, with the gear you do less damage, you take more damage. So we're hoping that this week there was a Iron Banner, which is a monthly PvP event, which drops really good gear. We're hoping that with the gear we're getting from that, we'll be good to go. Because, like, I'm at 375 light now, which is six points up from where I was when we tried last week. So I'll actually be doing damage to the boss this week. So we're hoping with that. We're also, like I said, we had a couple people who who realized that they don't enjoy progression rating. So for now, we'll yeah. just... For now, we'll just move them out, and then when we are when we have all the gear from the raid where we can carry them, then we'll bring them back in. Um, I've been playing some Darkest Dungeon that came out on PlayStation consoles. I've been playing on my Vita while I poop and do other things. Um, I played a little bit on the PS4, too. It helps the interface is a little bigger. I figured out the trinkets and stuff on there. I actually figured that out. That game is hard as balls. Yeah. Really enjoy it, though. Um, it, it, it's really... It's like, when do I want to keep these people alive? Do I like you enough? The game has only given me one healer the entire time. Yeah. So oh, I'm doing the whole thing without healing. It, it gave it to me at the very start, and then I, I, I keep going back to the to the stagecoach. I'm like, give me a healer. They're like, no. No healer for you. Um, so I, I just buy as much food as humanly possible every time yeah. I, before I go in. But again, it's that juggling act of like, Sometimes, like, I'll just suicide four guys in there because I need the week to pass to get my good guys back from the bar or something. Yeah. So, I do that. Um, God, there's one more game of it. Oh, I've been playing Until Dawn. I never actually played that and beat it myself. I watched oh, yeah. Alexis play through a lot of it. But, um, playing at night with headphones on, jumping like a, jumping like a little girl, for lack of better phrasing. <laughs> I still have Dylan's copy. Dylan, if you listen to this, if you want it, just text me. I'll mail it to you or something. Just chuck it into the hurricane and yeah. <laughs> poop it right back at his house. So yeah, um, that's about it for me. Um, God, can't stress how good Until Dawn is. Like, if you have a PS4 and you enjoy spooky stuff. I mean, it's not even really spooky, but it's just... I, I mean, it makes you jump, but like, I, 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 I'm not sitting here thinking like, ooh, spooky. Like, I, like, and I know what happens, too, so that, yeah. that helps me. Did you complete any of the stories? The investigations? What do you mean? Like, collecting all the items in Until Dawn. Oh, no. I, I, I'm only on Chapter 3. Oh. So, and I think there's 10 chapters, because you got 10 hours Until Dawn. Yeah. So. Josh! Maybe 10 or 11. I don't remember. Pretty much still just playing Overwatch, and I have been playing a while. 
But right now, my only goal is to get enough gear that I can do Karazhan when it comes out again. What is the gear requirement for that, that they're saying? I don't know. Um, I, I, know you, I know you have to attune to it. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah, you I, have to attune to it. But it's in the best possible way. It's a fucking I level 830 follower quest. Damn it. Yeah. I was really hoping that they were going to actually make us go to, like, Architraz and Mom, Botanical no. and all of that and get the old school attunement. Uh-uh. Nope. Just, like... S- send your followers out if you have ones that are I level 830. Hmm. Well, good thing I do. I should fire up my app <laughs> once in a while and keep them going, then. Yeah. Until you run out of order hall resources. Um... I'm gonna do you fucking world. I'd say I've got more order hall resources right now than I know what to do with. Well, I've upgraded my order hall a few times, so I have like none. Um, I am excited though because they are bringing back a few fights, so they're just tuning them to five men. Mm-hmm. One of them is Shade of Mediv, oh, which yeah. is Shade of Iran. Do not move. One flame wave is cast, or the brain floats up. Yes. So. That, I guess it would be party now, though. The good tale of Ningapul Carl, <laughs> who who moved during Flame Wraith, blew the raid up, and for good measure hit Slowfall on his way down, moving four more times and blowing the raid up even more. So that gets to come back. That that's exciting. I think there's only like three new fights in there. That's not going to be nearly as frustrating anymore, though, with only five people. Yeah. Still. It'll be fun. Um, so basically, I want to get enough gear so that I can do that at least twice, and then log back off again, because I don't really feel like playing Wild it much anymore. Um, twice, though. Yeah. It's Karazhan. i got to go you gotta, Well, I mean, you're going to at least have to do it three times, because you're going to want all the new opera events, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. Which, those are weird opera events. And if you want to get the, the new uh, Midnight... Yeah. Did you ever get the original last night? <laughs> I <Nope. didn't. laughs> Animosity saw it like five times. Boomstick didn't see it ever. Ugh. Yeah. I'm just glad that the old one will still be there. I did find it interesting how many fights they were keeping the same. Like, some of them are actually the exact same fight, like Attunman. Uh, I'm kind of upset that Prince Makazar isn't going to be there. I love the Prince. <laughs> well, I understand why, but I was kind of hoping they'd have another fight. Just because that was just... No, this fight was a really fun fight. It would yeah. be kind of hard to fight people, though. Yeah. Figured that was probably why. What was the other... No, that one was not. But yeah, another fight. Some funky thought they Hopefully had... they kind of reuse the mechanic, like, where you just have to stand in a beam somewhere. Maybe, well... I didn't read through the phases of the mana worm. So, because you do fight a giant mana worm at some point. It's like the second to last boss. So, maybe. That could be. I didn't read through the mechanic list for that. Either way, I'm really excited about Karazhan. I at least want to do that. Do we know what item level Karazhan's dropping? Because I know they said by putting it on a weekly cooldown, they were going to make the loot pretty... (sighs) They've probably said. I honestly haven't followed it much. I just happened to read the... Because I mean, I was basically at 540 with everything, if not 550 with some of my Warforged stuff. Yeah. Even when I quit, so... MMO Champion had just the full, like, dungeon journal that listed all the abilities and everything. Um, so I read through that to see what they were bringing back, just because I've been really excited for Karazhan since they announced it, because it was my favorite raid, or one of them at least. Um, so I don't know specifics. I mean, as everybody like had to draws, do it. But... Like, that was back in the day where you couldn't skip raid tiers. There was no catch-up. So, like, no matter when you started Burning Crusade, if you wanted to play Burning Crusade, you had to run Karazhan. Yeah, but it was also just a really good raid. Like... It was just good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I agree with you, but at the same time, it's like, we also had to do it. So well, yeah. If we weren't having a, like, if we didn't find a way to have a good time, like, it was just miserable. Especially for Boomstick, we could never put a 25-man raid together, so basically it was Kara until ZA came out. Well, yeah. And then, even then, when ZA first came out, that was hard as balls. Oh, yeah. So, it wasn't like you just ran right into ZA if well, you just had Karazhan. I feel like it wouldn't have been as bad had you not had to have specific heroes for specific buffs. Like, I think ZA would have been a little easier to get a team together and actually do. Well, and ZA got easy once the Isle came out and they started selling all that really good gear on the 
justice. Better. Well, yeah, because then everybody could just out DPS at all. But like even everything else, it was it would have been easier had you not had you actually been able to bring a melee to ZA instead of being like, nope, need all ranged. Because you know melee sucked at the time. Ranged still is fair, apparently really ranged is favored in the raids, but apparently melee is doing really good in the mythic dungeons. Yeah. Just because they can cleave everything. <laughs> so much trash. Nick, not been playing well. All right. What are you? Do you are you at one ten? Yeah. I mean, I figured by now, but yeah. No, I've been at one ten since like a week after I got. Yeah. So you playing the priest? Yeah, yeah, that's my main. Um, I have a shaman that's a hundred, a uh, demon hunter that's one hundred one, soils one hundred one. Those are all my ones that are on current content. Okay. So. Uh, you dungeoning with the guys then? Or? On occasion, they typically like are on and doing them when I'm on though. So. I was about to say the world quest, kind. Of, I mean. The WoW gearing now kind of works, especially in the World Quest, kind of works like Destiny, where like you just keep getting better and better stuff, so eventually right. when your item level gets so high doing the World Quest, it bumps you up to the next yeah. tier of stuff, which yeah. I think is pretty nice. So yeah. It's not bad. Um, I'm... What's Mythic? What's Mythic Dungeon eye level? That's 540 gear that drops base out of there. Why mm, are you asking what item level? I think it's 530. To get in. 530 or 520. I think it might be 520. It could be 520. I went in at like 487. <laughs> yeah, I started at 520, I think. I'll have to look. I'm pretty sure I'm I had to heal the first mythic I ever ran because we could break it through. Freeze. I think I'm at it for the freeze, but I'm not sure. But yeah. So. Cool. All right. What are you watching there, Matt? Oh, just a uh, um, this uh, Mafia Three thing. People, this one guy was saying it was a quality control video of like just weird glitches that are happening right now. So they're saying like just just wait a couple weeks before this for the stuff to get patched if you want to buy it. Hmm. Like people are getting like AI is getting stuck in like walls after they get shot and like. And the we I was watching a let's play when you and Nick got here of the game and the AI was like so dumb, like the one lady was like I saw you I'm gonna go call the cops, and then just like ran was like running into a door like <laughs> for a half for like a minute and he just the guy was sitting there like what the fuck is going on <laughs> like that it's like that video it was one guy was saying of uh, me shooting just a dude standing there in the division. He looked at me and he said, thanks. <laughs> the f Run! <laughs> Run away! Great programming, that game. The, uh, There's a reason everybody forgot about that game. The, yeah. Uh, one guy was saying, like, he'll park a car two lanes over and AI will be like, ah! And just drive into his car. <laughs> what? That's I was about to say, Mafia 3 might be a... Uh... A rent one of these weekends. Yeah. Well, like, I, the second game, once you got through the story, there was nothing to do. It wasn't like uh, Godfather 2 where you had to, to get your upgrades, you had to keep securing your, like, safe houses and stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Alright. Well, that's been another exciting episode of the Nips Oh, Cast. um, Grand Theft Auto 5 had an update come out where you can start biker gangs now. Ooh. Yeah. That's kind of neat. Wasn't that from, like, some sort of, like, community pushback, too? They're like, where's the biker stuff? Yeah. I think I read that somewhere. Yeah. That's, so that's pretty neat. Back the, Star uh, Lessons. Where's the single-player DLC you promised? They're not going to release them. <laughs> <laughs> Never. No one who complains um, will get it out. There's a disclaimer in the beginning of Mafia 3 about, like, if you're offended by, like, racism, like, you shouldn't play this game because we tried to keep it accurate to the era. And there's racism. And there's racism. And you can shoot a KKK rally. Hell yeah. Like, there's a bunch of, like... If you're like, offended by racism, there's a point where you get to shoot up a KKK rally. So don't don't even worry about like it. Like, in one of the trailers, like, uh, you see him walking up to the rally, and they're all, like, 
pro like in front of the burning cross and their hoods, and he's just like, do 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 do, just mowing down clansmen. All right, I like it. All right, well, try this again. <laughs> this has been another exciting episode of the Nibscast. Nibscast is a product of Nibs Media. If you like the podcast you just listened to, go ahead, like, comment, share, subscribe on the YouTube. Go into the um, description of this video. Follow the link to our Facebook page. Give us a like on there. Um, share us with a friend. Share us with an enemy. Jim Sterling, blah, blah, blah. Until next time, I'm Aaron. I'm Matt. I'm Josh. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.